no government has been able to do for people what people have been able to do for themselves when they had that opportunity. The American society as a whole can never achieve the outer reaches of its potential so long as it tolerates the inner cities of despair. The American dream is not to make everyone level with everyone else, but to create the opportunity for all people to reach as high as their God-given potential allows. The American idea is the most irresistible force on the face of the earth. In one word, freedom. It is the idea that governments derive their just powers from the consent of the governed. It is the idea that freedom and human dignity are universal values that apply to all people everywhere. That each individual should have the same opportunity to rise as high as his effort, initiative, and God-given talent can carry him. Get stuff done was Jack Kemp's idea. Be a leader uh, was Jack Kemp's motto. He says, tell him, be a leader, not a follower. Jack Kemp was that kind of leader. He got things accomplished. He worked with the other side. He was able to get things done for the good of the country. At the Jack Kemp Foundation, we are working hard to develop and engage the new generation of principled leaders. Men and women who can translate the American idea of optimism and hope into visionary policies for freedom and growth. For us, that begins with what history has to teach about the power of ideas. I'm Morton Kondracki, and I have the honor of serving as the first Jack Kemp Scholar. What I'm doing at the Library of Congress now is, uh, is researching his congressional career. His papers are all here at the Library of Congress, which I'm in the midst of combing through. This was probably the most influential person of his time who was not president. So far, Brian Williams and I have conducted 17 interviews with uh, Jack Kemp's brothers, with uh, staff members of his, with political associates, uh, football buddies, and we've also conducted three symposia. And all of this will be at the Library of Congress and on the website, so both scholars and the public can get an appreciation of what Jack Kemp was all about. Do you think he really, really wanted to be president? I think he really, really wanted to be president. My sense is, is that the moment Michigan didn't happen, Jack was no longer running for president to be elected president. Jack was running for president to make sure that the ideas that he believed in were a part of the party's debate. Thank you very much. He's a model for these tortured political times that we live in. He was a passionate conservative, uh, not you know interested in giving up on, on basic principle, but he also could get along with people who disagreed with him. You know, he had not, a, not an ounce of animus in his entire body, and it was a big body. There were a number of, of leaders on the House Ways and Means Committee particularly, who really were uncomfortable with where he was going in this regard. There was no enmity that I saw, at least. It was fascinating to watch. It was easy to believe uh, in the quote-unquote cause that he fought for because almost always it was the right thing to do. There are Jack Kemp Republicans. And when you think of that and Jack's, although he's part of the leadership, he's still a backbencher within his own party by and large uh, in the House of Representatives for many years. That's an amazing legacy. There are boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes of Jack Kemp memos, letters, speeches, mementos, all that stuff. It's at the Library of Congress, and it's not going to just sit there. You know, it has been cataloged for scholars, and the, the interviews are conducted on the basis of research into those files. So those are living files. They're not just sitting on a shelf. My name is Brian Williams, and I am the lead historian for the Jack Kemp Oral History Project. A lot of the um, life lessons that uh, Jack brought with him to, to Washington, he learned during his years playing professional football for the Buffalo Bills. One of the things I value about history is you often discover things that you don't expect to find. That was at times the case as we began to capture the memories of Jack's former teammates. One thing that I remember distinctly is uh, Jack used to love to throw the hook pattern to the tight end. Well, my fingers 
it took a long time for my fingers to <laughs> get any feeling back, and also my chest, because he threw a ball that was so hard that he must have been about 20 or 30 miles an hour. And he said, Ernie, hook up. And I said, do I have to? <laughs> you don't ever want to get hit, but when Jack would roll out after a play-action fake, uh, he would turn uh, upfield and take on a, a linebacker, put his head down, and uh, how many times we saw him get knocked out and carried off the field and after the one game. The next day in the paper, in the Buffalo News uh, had headlines, Kemp suffers concussion. Uh, and the sub-headline was, X-rays of head reveal nothing. So. <laughs> it's not surprising the character that made Jack a great leader in Congress was already present to the men he led on and off the football field. I'll tell you, in 1961, we were going to, uh, to Dallas to play with the Chargers. And we weren't allowed in the Hilton in Dallas. And the owner of the team owned the hotel. <laughs> So they said, okay, the white guys can stay at the Hilton, but the black guys, you have to go to Grand Prairie. And Jack Kemp went to Sid Gilman and said, this is not acceptable. Either we stay as a team or we don't play. And Jack Kemp was the guy that actually did it. We all ended up in the crappiest hotel in Grand Prairie, Texas, because of Kemp. Jack <laughs> Kemp was a leader of enormous energy. You hear that in all the stories that are told about him. They reflect a man of great, great spirit. I'm Brendan Evans, and I'm a graduate of the Kemp Leadership Academy. One of the legacies of Jack Kemp's life and career is the recognition that skills and character traits developed in athletics have tremendous value beyond the playing field. And I think that's the most important quality of being a leader, leader is, is that you don't talk down to anyone, but at the same time, you, you know what you're talking about. You use your experiences to help other people and to bring out the best in them. And I also feel like being at the Kemp Leadership Academy, they brought out those qualities in me. Jack Kemp wasn't afraid to ruffle a few feathers. Ronald Reagan said that when you talk about Jack, Jack Kemp, Kemp, one word comes to mind, the cause. Wherever he is, he'll fight for that cause. He'll work for that cause. Kemp and Reagan knew that ideas, like athletes, become better in competition. The Kemp Foundation is helping me, and leaders like me, sharpen our ideas to better serve our country. The Jack Kemp Foundation is doing fantastic stuff. I mean, it is bringing Jack Kemp's career to life, not merely as a memory, but as a continuing contribution to American political life. The Jack Kemp Foundation is dedicated to challenging and inspiring the next generation of leaders. Leaders who see that America's greatness still lies ahead. Leaders who uplift our spirits with visions of progress, hope, and growth. Leaders who believe in the boundless opportunities that freedom can bring to all people of goodwill leaders who will be champions for the American idea.